Good morning, everyone. You will never guess where I am. I had the incredible opportunity to travel to the big islands of Hawaii. I'm going to tour a coffee farm today and take you guys with me. So unfortunately, this is the first farm tour I'm going on that Grant isn't here with me. I'm going to miss him a lot, but this is one small comfort, I suppose, because this is the view from the farm we're touring. Grant might have to pick up the farm and come move to Hawaii. Can you imagine waking up to this every morning? It's no Scotty, but there's nine cats roaming around this place. They're everywhere. Look at this little guy. So I didn't just come to this farm by chance. And this trip isn't exactly just a Laura Farms trip filming at this beautiful coffee farm. I actually have a friend who is currently in Heavenly Hawaii's work stay program. So she graduated college and wasn't quite sure what to do and she heard about this program from a classmate. And so she moved to the big island of Hawaii and has been working on this coffee farm and living here and really just exploring the island. And I actually just went on a tour that she gave. She did such a fabulous job and it was so fun watching a friend just like in her element and sharing everything that she's learned with a big group of people. So I went on that tour gathered all the knowledge that she had to give, and now I'm going to pass it on to you guys. It's sunny right over there, but it just started raining on me. There's a lot of rain at the top and the hillside lets all the water slide down in a natural irrigation system. Heavenly Hawaii consists of 37.5 acres, and on the property, there is over 27,000 coffee trees. If you've never seen one before, here is a coffee tree. I am secretly hoping and praying that we are getting rain like this back home and that Grant can shut the pivots off. This place actually used to be a macadamia nut farm. And so there was actually an irrigation system all throughout this property, not a pivot, a little bit different. Um, but in the 90s, the price of macadamia nuts dropped drastically and they weren't making any money having to irrigate the crops and sell them. And so they switched to a coffee farm and Heavenly Hawaiian Farms was born. The farm starts at the base of that hill and that's at about 1,200 feet above sea level. And it goes all the way up to 1,800 feet above the sea level. The roads are a lot narrower and the curves are a lot tighter than the roads in Nebraska. These trees are called Kona Tipica and they were joking that even the trees are on island time. Everything just moves a little bit slower and at its own pace. So harvest of these coffee cherries, this is what's going to turn into your coffee bean, happens anywhere from August to December. Obviously they're not ripe right now, but they're picked at kind of a maroon burgundy red color. And on this farm, absolutely everything is handpicked. The people who handpick these will be coffee beans or coffee cherries, as I learned they're called, are anyone from the people that are here on the work stay program, like my friends, um, or people from like the Dominican Republic um, or South America. The record for coffee cherries picked by one person in a day is 850 pounds. Isn't that crazy? Uh, they're handpicked because if you just went through and like shook the branch when they're ripe, you would get the ripe ones off, but you'd also get some unripe ones. And so because they handpick everything, they're able to get the best of the best and the ripest every single time. 
for an ideal tree, there should be four branches on it. One, two, three, four. So there's an oldest branch, and that's the one that's going to produce the most fruit. And that one is pruned back each year after harvest. And then another new branch, like this one, is going to be allowed to grow. And this youngest branch is going to produce the least amount of coffee, but eventually it will mature into the oldest branch and the cycle continues. Even though it is a coffee farm, they have a variety of other trees on the property, like this avocado tree, and then there's also some citrus trees. And of course, we are in Hawaii, so everything is just lush and green and beautiful. I wish you guys could smell through the screen you're watching on. It's so lush smelling and green and fresh and the air is moist in like the best possible way. It's just rich and earth smelling. It's, it's amazing. Here's our nursery area growing coffee trees. So these lids are kind of incubating our baby trees. And these lids will stay on for about three months. These lids came off about two weeks ago. And as you can see, look, like that's a coffee bean right there that was planted and is sprouting. And then next stage, we have these. The leaves are getting big enough that they're actually pushing the coffee shells actually off. And then after this stage, they're put into little cones. They're getting bigger. And then they are ready to be planted. It's actually going to be about four years before these trees produce their first harvest. But after then, a tree's lifespan is about 40 years. It can go less than that or longer than that, but that's about the average. There are some trees on the island, not on this particular farm, but on a different coffee farm on the island that are over 100 years old and still producing coffee beans. Once the coffee cherries are picked by hand at harvest, you have about 10 to 12 hours to get them through the wet mill before they start going bad. So you're in kind of a crunch time. Here's the buckets that they're put into right after harvest. You, wore, you wear this bucket on this little harness situation right here. You weigh out how much you pick at the end of the day, and then it is all dumped in here. This is called the wet mill. You see down there, Essentially, the dense coffee cherries are going to sink and the bad ones that maybe have like, uh, let's say a bug got into them, those are going to float. Bad ones, don't want those. All the ones that sank, we do want those. Then, of course, it's not harvest time, so they're not actually running any of this right now, but if they did, the coffee cherries would go up this tube and then this metal container here also has water in it. And the coffee cherries go through a series of hills and valleys. And this is going to sort out any foreign objects like say rocks. And then it comes around here and in here, right here, this is where the skin of that coffee cherry is going to be removed. And then here, the fruit around the coffee bean is essentially power washed off. And all of that, the skin, there's usually a big truck bed over there and that's saved for compost. As I was looking at this machine, I'll give you a big, a big look. We have that exact motor on our farm running an auger that takes corn out of a bin and puts it into our semi truck. I'm all the way away from home, but I'm seeing pieces of equipment that we use on our farm. After that, the actual coffee beans go right in here, and then they are escorted over here. Can we just take in this view again? So at this point in the process, the coffee bean is at about 40% moisture. It's going to be laid out on the ground, all spread out here and dried and raked every single day over and over and over until it reaches about nine to 12% moisture. 
and they have little moisture checkers, just like we have at the farm to check the moisture of our corn and soybeans. After the beans have reached that dry down moisture, they are put into burlap sacks, just like this one, and they are taken down to a temperature controlled vault and kept there for at least two months. After that, our beans go through a series of quality control checks to make sure that they are all even and have as few defects and deformities and chips as possible. The less defects they have, the more of an even roast that you're able to get. So I learned a lot of stuff on this tour, but the thing that surprised me the most was after all this process, then this is when the beans actually go to be roasted. So they're roasted in this super, high-tech machine. I'm talking like it's hooked up to a computer and it's sending all these graphs to this farm's uh, senior roaster. And it takes about 15 minutes in this roaster to get a medium roast coffee. But in between a light, medium, and dark roast, there's only about 30 seconds. So the lady that's up there roasting coffee beans is seriously on the ball. Everyone I've met here at Heavenly Hawaiian Farms has been so welcoming and incredible. And I will be spending the next couple days on this island and filming some things that I do. So if you're ever in the Hawaii area, I would definitely come check out this place, but I know that you can order 100% Kona coffee online. And trust me, I've had it. It's the best coffee. One thing that I haven't tried yet is geisha coffee. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So the geisha coffee actually originated in Panama and it was brought over to the big island in like 2016 or 2017. And it's allegedly the best cup of coffee you will ever have. In the gift shop up there, they're selling a bag, four ounce bag for $80. I feel like since I'm here, I have to try a cup. The last time I was on a Hawaiian island, was Maui and it was two years ago I think and it was for my honeymoon with Grant and I have to say being back on an island without him makes me kind of sad. I guess it means I'll just have to come back again, right? cup of coffee. Supposedly it's going to be the best cup of coffee I ever have in my life. So it's going to ruin anything that I have at home. Unless I splurge for the $80 bag. But we'll, we'll see how this taste goes. I'm pretty hot. That's pretty good. This year will be Heavenly Hawaii Coffee's first geisha bean harvest. They call it the champagne of coffee and it was pretty good. I am used to just like Folgers or Starbucks or just regular store-bought coffee. So that was quite an upgrade for me. And it's raining again. <laughs> I hope you guys learned something new in this video. I have loved my time in Hawaii and hopefully next time I can come back and bring Grant. So thank you for watching today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.